there, it's Anna from the House and Homestead, and I'm here today to show you how to make the perfect flaky pie crust. So we're just heading into the holidays right now. Christmas is about two weeks away, so we are in prime pie baking season. And you know, you really, if you want to wow people at Christmas time, or honestly, if you just really want to enjoy your pie, you got to do it homemade. And especially the crust, you can't buy the store-bought stuff. Oh my God. Once you've had a good homemade flaky pie crust, like you'll never buy that stuff from you know the freezer section of your grocery store again. But getting pie crust right can be a little bit tricky if you've either never done it before or if you just kind of don't understand how pie crust works. Pie crust is a short crust. What that means is that you don't want the gluten strands in the dough to develop. So instead of having long gluten strands, which form like when we're baking bread and we're kneading that bread, right? Um, we don't want that to happen with our shortbread cookies or with our short crusts, our pie crusts. We wanna keep those, those gluten strands short, not long and kind of sticky, right? So um, the, the key to that is there's a few elements and one of them is to not overwork the dough. That's usually the number one reason why people struggle with their pie crust is just kneading it too much or overworking it. The other thing is to keep the fat content really high, so using butter or lard, and um, I actually use cream instead of water for my pie crust, which I'll, I'll go over all that in a minute, but keeping that fat content high is gonna give it really good flavor, um, but also help it to um, maintain that, so that really flaky texture, because that addition of fat in the crust actually helps to um, in inhibit the gluten strands from forming. So keeping the fat content high, and then the other thing is to keep the fat nice and cold. Um, so I've got my butter here, and I've just had this in the freezer. So I like to chop mine up and then actually put it in the freezer and keep it as cold as possible right before I make my pie crust. Um, because you don't want it to melt in there, you want to keep the shape of the butter. There sh it should be kind of dotted all throughout your pie crust um, because that butter, then when you put it into the oven, melts and it maintains these little pockets within the dough that, that help to give it that really nice layered flaky texture. So not overworking it, high fat content, and keep it keep your ingredients, especially your, your fat that you're using, really nice and cold. So the most common fats are using butter or lard. Um, now there's pros and cons to each. Uh, butter tends to have a little bit better flavor, that kind of buttery flavor, especially I use salted butter for everything. Um, so that tends to give it a little bit of a, you know, a more flavor, flavorful crust and still nice and flaky, but the lard really helps with that flake. Um, if you are vegan, you can always use coconut oil and just do the same thing. You want to, you know, keep it nice and cold before you're using it. You don't want it to melt while you're making your pie crust. You don't want it to melt until you get in, get into the oven. So you're going to chop it into, I just chop it into probably about half inch, quarter to half inch cubes. And then I just stick it in a bowl in the freezer or at least keep it in the fridge nice and cold before you use it. Just make sure it's nice and cool. And then um, before you start on your flour, actually, you're gonna get your liquid ready. So if you're just using water, which you can, um, then just make sure you get your liquid ready to go, your water ready to go. But I use cream because again, I wanna keep that fat content really high. It's gonna help to give it flavor and flakiness and everything else. And the other thing, little trick that I've learned that works really well is to add about a tablespoon of vinegar. And I believe people use white vinegar as well, but I use apple cider vinegar um, because that also will inhibit the, those gluten strands from forming. Um, and so what I do is I actually just mix it right into my cream that I'm using milk for, this is just a heavy cream. Sit for a minute and then I go ahead and I start my dough. So pie crust is super simple as far as ingredients go. Really all it is is flour, fat source, right? So butter or lard and, um, and your liquid. So sometimes water or like I say in this case, I use cream. And then I throw in about a teaspoon of salt for flavor. If I'm doing a sweet crust, I might throw in a little bit of sugar as well, a couple tablespoons of sugar. Um, this pie crust that I'm making, so I'm gonna do three cups of flour. This pie crust that I'm making is for a meat 
pie. It is for a tortier, which is a French Canadian Christmas meat pie with all sorts of delicious spices. I am actually, I've got my filling ready to go there and I'm going to have that, a recipe for that on the blog as well. So I will drop a link to that below if you want to get the full recipe for my uh, Christmas tortier. Uh, but since I'm doing a savory pie, I'm not going to bother with adding sugar. I will add a teaspoon of salt just for flavor. And I'm going to cut in my butter. You can also throw it all in a food processor as well. That works. Um, but I prefer to make it with my hands. So I'm just going to toss this in the bowl. And you want to break the butter or lard or whatever fat source you're using down into pea-sized chunks, right? So you don't want them to be too big, but you don't want to break them down too, too small. You want them to, um, you know, like I say, create little pockets within your dough um, so that when they melt in the oven, they leave these cool little flaky air pockets. So I'm just going to go ahead, hopefully you can see that a little bit. Another thing that some people like to do is to freeze their butter ahead of time and then use a cheese grater on the large grater um, setting or side um, and grate their frozen butter um, into their pie and then cut it, cut it in. I just find it's easiest for me just to chop it up when it's cold, um, usually when it's been in the fridge, and then throw it in the freezer for a few minutes before I'm ready to use it. Okay, so that's about good now. So you can see it's been kind of broken down and all mixed together but it's still mealy and there's still obvious chunks of butter in there and that's what you want. The next thing is to add in your liquid. I have, I've got a half a cup of cold cream and I find that I always need just a little bit more than half a cup. Some people find they don't need any much liquid at all and it's usually recommended that um, you add it in like tablespoon by tablespoon. For me, I kind of know how much it takes for me to get a good pie crust to put together. And I tend to use the whole half cup. And usually I tend to feel like I need like a tablespoon or so more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in most of this and I kind of do it little by little and get it, start moving it around there. just going to form it together as best as possible and this is the part that can really trip people up if they're, you're new to pie making because it can be kind of hard to get a pie crust to stick together um, and so people tend to add more liquid and work it more trying to get stuff together and that's what ends up forming those gluten strands and ends you end up with a, a really tough crust right instead of that light flaky crust. So it's okay if you're having trouble getting it stuck together. You just want to get it stuck enough that it kind of holds its shape in a ball. So once it's starting to get stuck together, I kind of find it easiest just to dump it out. And of course, you want to make sure that you've got a nice, clean, flat workspace to work on. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of form this until it's ready to go. Okay, so I'm still having a little bit of trouble getting it to stick, which totally happens sometimes. So I'm just gonna wash my hands quickly and add just a tablespoon more cream to that. So, not even a tablespoon. And I'm kind of just going to pour that down. All right. So it's kind of formed a nice ball. It's still flaky and crumbly. But, you know, it's sticking together now. And what's going to help with that is that I'm going to wrap it up in a little bit of plastic wrap. And I'm going to stick it in the fridge um, for kind of about an hour, at least, just to make sure that those ingredients are nice and cold again. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a little bit of this plastic cling wrap. There we go, so just keep it covered, right? That'll keep it from getting too dry as well. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in the fridge and let that chill. Okay, so now it's time to roll out our pie crust. So I actually made this pie crust last night and I had it chilling in the fridge overnight. I like to take it out about 10 to 15 minutes before I'm going to roll it out. It just makes the dough a little bit easier to work with so it's not like rock solid. Of course, if you have it in the freezer, you're gonna want to defrost it. I usually just take it out of the freezer when I know I'm gonna make a pie, like later in the day or the next day and let it defrost in the fridge and then pull that out 10 or 15 minutes before you want to roll it out. Now, um, this recipe that I'm doing, this is, a, this is a double crust pie, so that means it's enough for a bottom crust and a top crust. I will drop a link to my pie crust recipe below the video, so if you wanna get the full recipe, you can click there and get that. Um, but I use my three cups of flour and my one cup of butter and my half cup of liquid. That's for a, uh, a double pie crust, so that means I've got a top and bottom out of this. So, First of all, before I do anything, I want to make sure that I get my uh, counter floured up. Okay, so when you're rolling out your pie crust, obviously make sure your counter is floured and I add a fair amount of flour on top or onto your rolling pin because I have this nice heavy weighted marble rolling pin which is really good for pie crust. I like it better than the lighter wooden ones um, but I, the, I tend to flour right on the dough. You can flour the rolling pin if you like but just make sure you don't want anything sticking, right? Now I find that it's pretty much impossible to get a perfect round pie crust. So don't sweat it if yours looks really ratty and it's like not looking round much at all. I've had some pretty hideous looking pie crusts um, and they have still tasted delicious and turned out just fine. And pie is really forgiving in the sense that um, if you're missing chunks, you kind of got big long pieces hanging off, it's really easy to trim it up, to kind of take extra pieces and smush them in spaces where you're missing some. and. So don't worry too much about that. You just want to kind of get it in a general um, circle, circular shape, right? And you want to roll it out so that it's going to fit your pie pan. So I've got a nine inch pie pan that I'm using. My um, cast iron there I think is the same, nine or 10 inches. So this crust um, will fit either or. Okay, so that's probably pretty good. You just want to make sure it's going to fit your pie plate. I'll just check that by putting that there. And that looks like I'm probably going to have more than enough to hang over the sides. So, just give it one more little go. Okay. So, now as far as getting your pie crust in your pie plate, there's a couple options. Some people like to actually roll it up on the rolling pin and then unroll it. You roll it up and then pick it up and unroll it over the pie plate. Um, I don't love that. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky for me. I like folding it, I find is the easiest. So that's when you basically just pick it up and you gently fold it in half and then you fold it in half again so that it's folded into quarters. Then pick it up ever so gently all right, and place it in your pie plate so that that corner is about in the middle and then you're gonna unfold it. Just a little bit if you need to. And then unfold it again. There you go. And then you just wanna press it into your pie plate. Perfect. All right, and then from there, you're just gonna go ahead and 
I actually did pretty well on this one. I don't have any spots I really need to fill in, but I certainly do have some excess that you can either pull off or I like to just trim off the excess with a knife. So you got the bottom crust is ready to go. And so I've got my filling all ready to go here. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scoop it right into my pie and we are gonna do the top crust. So our bottom crust is done, our pie is ready. I'm just gonna put that on the stove, which is definitely not on. So once again, you wanna really flour that surface. All right, so my top crust. Now, for your top crust, this is where you can get creative. If you wanna do a lattice crust, like I did here, it's actually way easier than it looks. Um, to do one, you just cut your dough into strips and then you kind of just place them all one on top of another and then kind of just lift one up and weave it underneath. So it's, it's pretty easy. Um, but for this one, we're just gonna do a straight up flat um, top crust but we're gonna fancy it up with a little cookie cutter. Okay, so I've got this little star-shaped cookie cutter and I'm gonna just kind of roughly find the middle of this pie I'm gonna cut out a little star shape, which is pretty, but it also is a spot where the steam can escape. So, and I'm just gonna put my star to the side because I actually use the stars after. And now this one is super, super crumbly. So I wanna be very delicate, but I'm gonna do the same thing as my bottom crust and I'm just gonna fold it in half. And then from there, I go around and I kind of just stick it all together first, make sure everything is covered. Perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead, just like with the bottom crust, and I'm going to go and cut off the excess. There we go. Now, to do the edges, you can, um, you can just press them down if you like. You can use a fork um, to kind of press down the edges and that makes a nice little pattern all the way around. Or you can crimp them, which I really like, which is you just take your index finger and your thumb from one hand um, and then your index finger from the other and you kind of just wedge them together and turn and crimp the edge, kind of poke little triangles almost in it. So I'm just going to go ahead all the way around and do that. to then um, cut out a few more of these stars and just put them all around just to kind of decorate it up. So I use any of the excess um, flour or the excess dough and I just cut some of those star shapes out of there. Okay, so last I'm just going to brush on this egg wash before I bake it. So I put this all over the top on this one. Um, and because it acts a little bit like a glue, I do that first and then I stick my little star shapes on. So if you're adding any kind of embellishments or anything like that, that's how you do it. You want to brush it with egg wash, get around the sides, and then I just like to stick my stars kind of, you can do them in a pattern or I kind of do them randomly all over my pie. All right. There we go, and I kind of just give them a brush over top as well. All right, there you are. A perfect flaky pie crust. It's gonna go in the oven now, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's done. 
Okay, so our pie is ready. It's been in for an hour at 3.75. And it's baked pretty perfectly. So I will make sure to leave links to um, my full pie crust recipe, as well as my recipe for the Christmas tortilla, the meat pie that we made today, um, as well as for some of my home canned pie fillings, because if you can up some of your fruit in the summer and make your own pie filling, then come this time of year, you've got that part in the bag already, it's done. You can make your dough ahead of time even if you want, even if you want to make it and put it in the freezer ahead of time. And then come Christmas day or come whatever day you're going to be baking your pie on, you can just take your dough out of the freezer and let it thaw, grab you know a couple jars of your home can pie filling and throw that together and you have a homemade pie completely from scratch but with very little effort on the actual baking day. As always, if you like this video, make sure to hit like below and subscribe so you never miss an update from the House and Homestead.